The way to think about it is that this is China's attempt to stand up a China-led alternative global order. This is China bringing together things like the Belt and Road Initiative, its global development initiative, global security initiative, global civilization initiative. They want to bring it all into one very loose, very vague structure that they hope will provide an alternative to the post-World War II, from China's point of view, Western-led structure. Despite the fact that it is maddeningly, almost laughably vague, doesn't contain any real rules or laws or processes or organizations. It's just a bunch of blandishments about how nice it is uh, to be free and democratic and to develop. It's easy to laugh at, but we should take it seriously because much of the global South in particular is signing on to it. It is easy for countries in the global South to sign on to, precisely because it doesn't obligate them. And because most countries in the global South uh, want to continue to receive Chinese uh, development lending. They want to continue to have access to the Chinese market. Some of them are also dependent on cheap Chinese goods. So it's very easy for governments to feel like in signing on to or endorsing these vague Chinese initiatives, they feel like they're not doing anything. Endorsing is easy. It comes with a price tag down the line. And because most of the countries that endorse this are very needful of development, there's an implicit blackmail clause in this. Don't oppose China. Come on board with China in this seemingly costless way. Running throughout this paper is an accusation that the United States and its minions are entirely hegemonic and self-interested. That is nowhere stated, but it is foundational to China's argument, and therefore it's something that we need to pay close attention to.